A Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine has come under scrutiny in Europe for possible links to blood clotting. The European Medicines Agency says it's launched a review after reports of four such cases, one of them fatal. South Africa has secured 30 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson jab. They're set to arrive in the coming weeks. It's currently only being rolled out in the United States. The AstraZeneca vaccine, you may recall, had was also being investigated for links to possible blood clotting in Europe, forcing governments there to change their advice for people who it should be administered to. Professor Musa Mushabela, Acting Deputy Vice Chancellor at the University of KZN's Research and Innovation Department, joins us as ever to try and make sense of the latest uh, scientific conversations around the vaccines. Prof, always good to have you. So we're sitting here today with four cases of blood clots, possibly linked to the Johnson & Johnson jab. How worried should we be? Thank you, uh, Tembegile. Greetings to you and the viewers. Um, I think that uh, it's important that we note these findings. Um, it, it's, it should not be a reason for worry uh, at this point, but we need to pay attention to it because um, it is likely going to be one of the potential adverse events that we're going to have to monitor. And if indeed it is found that uh, these blood clots are linked to Johnson & Johnson vaccine as well, then this needs to be registered as an adverse event so that we can disclose it to people who are going to use it. Otherwise, we should not worry at this point. It is still a very, very rare event mm -hmm. uh, that is potentially only available, uh, that is seen in one in a million um, doses. So it's very rare. And European governments, of course, are administering the AstraZeneca jab with that warning of possible but very rare uh, incidents of blood clotting. But how easy is it scientifically to link blood clotting to a vaccine or a particular uh, medical treatment? Yeah, no, this is going to be challenging. Firstly, I think all medical technologies and products and uh, interventions, drugs, have uh, side effects that often people have to uh, see before they take them. But linking them is hard because it requires something we call uh, cause and effect uh, studies or causality linkages. And this is very difficult to do. There is a whole criteria of more than 10 items one has to meet before they can actually make that uh, link scientifically from an epidemiology point of view. However, I think it is uh, clear right now that the scientists are rushing to find the plausible explanation for it. And I think they've made some strides so far that it is possible that these vaccines are triggering antibodies that uh, reduce, um, that increase uh, clotting um, uh, tendencies in the blood. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, because the numbers are so small, it is very difficult to prove it conclusively, which is why it is a question at this point. It is plausible, not probable. How do governments such as South Africa that are still waiting to receive their vaccines, be it the millions of doses from Johnson & Johnson that we're expecting, and any other vaccine then, uh, get ahead of possible fears and hesitation from citizens who then say, well, look, even if there is a very small, very rare chance of possible blood clotting, I am concerned about taking the vaccine? Yeah, no, absolutely. This is the most important part, I think, um, in terms of communicating these issues and making people aware. I think that with the vaccines and the vaccine rollout is so critical that we need full disclosure. We need to make sure that everybody is aware of these things. It's just that as science evolves, it's very difficult for government to say exactly what, what the facts are at this point. However, I do think that the regulatory body in South Africa needs to keep government informed and advise government on how to craft those messages for the public. But we have to talk about it and make people aware and address any concerns that people have. And also, I think the government is putting together that uh, compensation fund for risks when people receive vaccines, uh, just in case people uh, experience vaccines. And because the companies basically did not want liability, so government has to carry that. So yeah. that has to also be made public. And you're making the point a moment ago about how there are already medicines that are available to us that do, for example, increase one's chances of getting blood clotting. I was just hearing from uh, women colleagues who were saying, for example, contraceptives, actually, there have been studies exactly. that say if you take contraceptives, they do very small chance, but they do, for example, increase your chances of developing blood clots. But still, they are taken by millions of people every year safely. In fact, the chances of a blood clot with contraceptives is much higher, much higher than with the vaccine so far. So it's about one in a thousand people 
would, are likely to get blood clots with contraceptives. But with um, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, it's about one in a million. Thank you so much for speaking to us as ever. Professor Moussa Moshabela, Acting Deputy Vice-Chancellor at the UK's Research and Innovation Department.